Today's video is brought to you by AlphaCool and AquaTuning. Whether you live in the US, Canada, or Europe, be sure to check them out at AquaTuning.us for all your water cooling and modding needs. Hey guys, you're watching Jay's Two Cents, and I've already brought you a review of the Full Copper Nexus water block from AlphaCool. And today we're going to take a look at the Nexus XT45 Full Copper Radiator. A lot of radiators on the market are made of a mixture of brass and copper and some of them even have aluminum in them. One of the things that sets Alpha Cool apart is the fact that this is a full copper radiator. Tubes, the tanks, and the fins on this radiator are copper. Copper is a much better heat conductor than brass, so when you can get copper in here, it's a much better conductor of heat and it's going to move all of the unwanted heat away from your CPU. This model that I'm holding here is the Nexus XT45. And the reason why it's called the XT45 is because it is 45 millimeters thick. This is a pretty thick and pretty heavy radiator because of its full copper construction. On the end tanks here you can see that you have multiple options here for mounting of barbs. You've got two on the front, two on the bottom, and two on the top. So regardless of where you put this in your case, whether it's front mounted, bottom mounted, top mounted, or side mounted on something like a 900D uh, or maybe a TJ07 uh, from Silverstone, you're going to have all sorts of mounting options. Now when it comes to hardware, they do include full copper uh, mounting screws for your fans. Uh, it's pretty unique the fact that they are full copper here. They also do include four full copper uh, plugs here for the four holes that you end up not using when it comes to the mounting options on this radiator. Now the fin design, uh, I'm not sure what the FPI is on this, but the, which is fins per inch. However, you can see right through the radiator. So you know that airflow is going to really flow nicely through this radiator so they're optimized for medium and low speed fans. Now the mounting screws on here are standard spacing for 120 millimeter fans. Obviously this is the triple 120 or the 360 version of this radiator. But what I do like is that down underneath the screw holes here, even though these holes line up with some of the runs or the tubes that are in this radiator, on cheaper radiators, if you screw in too far, the screw goes right into that channel, it puts a hole in your tube, and your radiator is ruined. However, uh, the Alpha Cool radiator here does have a plate that goes all the way around the mounting screws that keep you from screwing too far into your radiator tube. So that's a really nice addition uh, for those that are uh, maybe not quite as aware of how far their screws are going down into their radiator and that's going to save you from destroying a very nice radiator such as this. Other than that, there's really nothing in the box uh, other than some bubble pop and so if you like to pop these things, it's uh, hours and hours of enjoyment and fun. So let's go ahead and get this thing inside my machine, see how well it cools my 3770K and my GTX 680. This is my first full copper radiator and I'm really excited to see how it performs compared to the brass radiators that I currently have installed. So uh, let's get over here and let's tear this thing apart. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about the system it's cooling. It is an Intel 3770K overclocked to 4.7 gigahertz at 1.26 volts. Now we are talking about core temperatures here, so the brass and copper radiator with three 120 fans had a 28 Celsius idle average and a 68 Celsius max average on the cores. However, on the full copper radiator, core temperature idle was 27 degrees Celsius and max on the cores was 62 degrees Celsius. That's a 6 degrees Celsius average drop by simply switching to a full copper radiator. 
And when it comes to my GTX 680 overclocked to 1306 megahertz, the story is no different. We had a 32 degrees Celsius idle average and a 48 degrees Celsius max average. However, with the full copper radiator, the changes were even more apparent with a 28 degrees Celsius idle and a 41 degrees Celsius maximum average on the GPU. Now before anybody says, but Jay, you have a thicker copper radiator versus a thinner brass radiator, that's just not fair. Let's go ahead and keep in mind that the full copper radiator only has 10 fins per inch versus the brass copper radiator's 20 fins per inch. So there's twice as many cooling fins on the brass. So there you have it guys, it's been Jay's Two Cents regarding the Nexus XT45 full copper radiator from AlphaCool. I've been using the thing for about five days now and it truly is amazing what a difference a full copper radiator can make. The full copper design and the amount of thermal conductivity that this radiator has is gonna allow me to bump up my overclock just a little bit more, making my thermal threshold just that much higher. This is definitely a radiator to consider if you're building a full custom loop Make sure to check it out, AlphaCool XT45, the Nexos full copper radiator. And once again, we have to give a very big thank you to AquaTuning for setting me up with this radiator, allowing me to do this review, and I will see you guys in my next video. But don't forget, subscribe, like, favorite, follow, do all that fun stuff, and we will see you guys next time when we see you.